Greetings, folks, and welcome to today's show. Our guest is Representative Judd Matheny, who is uh, well known to all of us by this time. And uh, he's been in the, uh, how long have you been in the General Assembly? It's ten years, Tom. Ten years. Yes, sir. And uh, is now, I guess, this is the second season as the uh, Speaker Pro Tem of the House? Correct, yes, sir. Right. And uh, you were named uh, by one or two or three organizations as Legislator of the Year. What, what's that about? Tell us that. Well, two uh, development districts in the state, South Central Tennessee Development District and Upper Cumberland Development District, uh, which total about 30 counties in Middle Tennessee, um, did give me that honor, Legislator of the Year. Um, of course, it, I had a lot of help in helping them, but we mainly administer uh, state and federal programs or those organizations do on the local level. And uh, we just help uh, provide advocacy for those in the General Assembly to continue those programs and education amongst the citizenry. And uh, those are basically uh, job creation, job creation right? en entities, yeah. and also public transportation, uh, some public meals, uh, some of your senior citizen meal programs uh, funnel through there. But you're right, a lot of job creation, a lot of job training and development, um, things of that nature. We've had. This district has seen a lot of economic growth in the uh, industrial sector. Uh, Middle Tennessee's actually done well. Our employment unemployment rate overall in Tennessee is below the national average, and a lot of good things going on. And then uh, the uh, Tennessee Wildlife Resources Foundation also gave me a, a unique honor, and it was uh, once again I had a lot of help in that also. But there wasn't a, a hostile attempt to to redo the inner workings of the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency, and. Um, I was uh, asked by some uh, great conservationists and hunters to intervene and to stop this uh, takeover and to put a, a more uh, predictable path in place in our hunting and fishing seasons again uh, to correct some of the problems that were uh, seen by some hunters and fishermen. And I think we did that with some hearings, uh, increased the communication between the legislature and the agency. And I learned a lot. I'm a much better legislator from uh, working with the Wildlife Foundation and the Resources Agency, and I'm a great fan of, I mean, here in, in Coffee County, we have deer everywhere. We have uh, a lot of turkey. I mean, obviously, they, they've we done have a too one. Many deer. <laughs> if they've done it. We have 22 deer per square mile uh, is the population count in Coffee County, but uh, le learned a lot, had a very productive year, and um, met a lot of people across the state that uh, will, will be valuable in relationships as we move forward. Yeah. Sure. Okay, very good. Well, with that, folks, let's take a short commercial break, and we'll come right back. The highest standard of trust offers a sense of safety and comfort. It's established over time. You know when you see it. You know when you feel it. There's a standard of trust in healthcare. It's the Joint Commission Gold Seal of Approval. In 2003, Life Care Center of Tullahoma voluntarily achieved this accreditation and maintains it still today. Life Care, meeting a higher standard because residents matter most. This is J.D. Oliver here at the Smokehouse on Mont Eagle Mountain. My sisters Betsy, Nancy, and I would like to thank you for supporting our family business for over 50 years. Hello, this is Stella Parton, and I am standing here right in the middle of Jim Oliver's Smokehouse Restaurant. But you need to come in here. We just got through doing a show. We also have a music scene going on here, and I want to invite you to come down because it is your mountain destination. Music on the mountain in Mont Eagle, Tennessee. My name is Betsy Oliver. I'm the kitchen manager here. We serve a lot of ribs and barbecue and fried chicken. Hey, this is Sean Mayer, and I just want to let everybody know to stop in at the Smokehouse if you're ever on your way to Chattanooga or Nashville. They not only have a great gift shop, awesome food, great entertainment on Saturday nights, but beautiful cabins to stay in. Check it out. Make the Smokehouse your mountain getaway destination. Stay in one of our 84 lodge rooms and 20 timber frame log cabins. Look around our trading posts and eat in our delicious restaurant. Enjoy music on the mountain every Saturday night featuring the best of Nashville. Our family hopes to see you this year at Jim Oliver Smokehouse. We're back folks and we're talking <coughs> today with Representative Judd Matheny and uh, we always meet with Judd after the end of the legislative session and find out uh, what was going on and uh, so that's what we're up to today. Uh, Judd, we, uh, we had uh, a shorter term, you've reduced the term some this year, but I'm not sure you reduced the number of bills it went through. And uh, in the process, you got lots of uh, 
publicity, most of it adverse, with respect to the, the quantity and the subjects of the social issues that you brought up. Guns, abortions, sex ed, evolution, how to teach science, uh, and the, uh, the Fandy thing. And uh, as I say, it got a lot of bad publicity. How, how do you want to well, I'll just, comment <coughs> in a nutshell, I'll state that the, uh, the Tennessee General Assembly as it sits right now is a, is a relatively conservative body. Um, we, we did have some conservative legislation that was put forward, uh, anything from the don't say gay bill to indemnifying teachers to be able to talk about evolution if the questions are asked in the classroom, um, to some charter school accountability bills, to the bill that you're talking about that dealt with Vanderbilt and potential cessation of state funds to some of their programs if they continue to uh, practice religious discrimination or what we believe is religious discrimination. But it's important to know that those things that we are fighting for, they are a small percentage of what it is the Tennessee General Assembly actually does. In addition to approving the budget, which is a balanced budget according to our Constitution, um, passed a budget this year that's actually a billion dollars less than, less than last year's budget, and we were still able to put tax decreases uh, on the board, both in, uh, albeit small, uh, we are reducing the sales tax on food, albeit small, we have increased the exemption on the hall income tax um, that uh, an individual filer can claim on interest and dividend income. We have uh, done away with the gift tax in Tennessee, uh, effective January 1 of 2013. Um, basically, a, a business owner can uh, gift or pass on their wealth and business while they're still alive to an heir or an inheritance while they're still alive um, without the tax liability. Um, and also the inheritance tax, uh, also known as the death tax, is being phased out in Tennessee. Uh, we increased it over a four year over a four year period, yes, yeah. sir. And uh, we'll not only, of course, surpass the federal exemption of five million, but we will get rid of it altogether. Um, the idea being that enabling Tennessee to park more wealth here is going to create more wealth in the uh, out here in our economy and going to create more jobs. Um, the state is foregoing revenue now on all these tax decreases. Um, but in the future, we are going to see more money coming into the coffers. You're, you're casting these as uh, being attractive for getting businesses to come in. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, well, let's, uh, uh, some of the others, uh, what, what was the, uh, what's the driver behind the sex ed uh, issue? Well, that's just, uh, I want to say that bills like that come up every year in the Tennessee General Assembly. And well, let's talk about what it was. For, as I recall, it, it was just uh, uh, sort of forbidding uh, sex education in the lower grades, one through six or so. Well, and, and it was giving, it was putting some reasonable parameters in place. Um, we think that education is best left at home at that age. Um, we did see some evidence of some very, very graphic examples that were being given to students, um, both illustrations and alternatives to, to normal sex. Uh, we didn't agree with those that were being taught, and we just wanted to say it, this is a subject that's best left at home for this age group right now. Um, the government can obviously not do something that is, is palatable to all parties involved. Well, of course, a lot of the social issues, uh, you know, you you run into the old philosophical point that you can't legislate morality. That's right. Uh, and so if you have to, the extent you have to get into that seems to me reflecting a, <coughs> a breakdown in the role of the family, <coughs> excuse me, so schools many things, churches. So many things are, are tied to that, Tom. I mean, they really are. <coughs> Whether some of the problems we're seeing in the classroom, the behavioral problems, the inability of teachers to, to truly be able to teach to their fullest extent and, and reach every ch child equally in the classroom. Many of these things we're, we're seeing deteriorating social fabric are, are, uh, are the, uh, the main cause of this. And uh, we're in a difficult situation. Parents need to step up and continue to do more. Um, we can't. Uh, one thing I've learned in the last couple of years in dealing with entire education reforms is, is how much really that our citizenry expects teachers to do above and beyond just teaching the child. And well, it's, uh, uh, <coughs> you know, we're, we're in a bit of a quandary there. Uh, the, with the extent of the breakup in the families that we have uh, going on, you leave a gap there, you know, and the question is, does that gap stay or do you try to address it? And about the only place you have to address it is in school. 
system. So I don't know. I don't know how you resolve well, that it's, one. Well, it's I've I've come to the the uh, agreement with myself <coughs> that there's not necessarily always going to be a right or wrong answer. There may be a best option at times, and we have to we have to look at every angle and make make the best choice. Yeah. Okay. Well, all right. Let's uh, let's let's shift over. Um, unless there's some other comment you want to make about those, we can shift over to the non-social issues. Yeah, if you want I'm. To. Uh, I think this this general assembly, um, everyone, if you go back, are um, spiked with social issues, whether they be abortion bills, whether they be uh, homosexual bills, firearm bills, or what people would consider social in many cases, as some of our gun right bills. But this general assembly, by and large, was a business-oriented, jobs-friendly, jobs-creating um, general assembly that laid a, uh, a glide path for Tennessee to be able to create more wealth for its citizens, retain more wealth, um, its citizens that have accumulated it here in Tennessee. And I think that's the focus of the general, this general assembly, and I think that's what its legacy will be. Um, you know, the, the media loves to get a hold of those headline-grabbing things because it's just not real sexy all the time to read about inheritance tax scalebacks and, and foregone revenue from gift taxes. But it is pretty exciting to read about, uh, you know, children fighting in the classroom or, or teachers fighting in the classroom with parents over sexual education. Well, but that is a very small minority, very small of the things that happen in the state of Tennessee. Okay. Well, let's talk about... Uh some of the um, some of the things that got passed. What are your what are your favorite subjects there? What are you proud of? Well, one that I'm very <coughs> proud of. I worked. Uh, I actually was a bill sponsor in the House. Was a prescription drug database bill. That uh, prescription drug abuse in Tennessee. We are one of the nation's leading states in prescription drug abuse, and that comes from a, a subculture of lax um, prescribing in some circles in Tennessee. Um, some of it due to uh, ten care explosions and more medicines being able to hit more people over the past years. Um, this is also a national trend that is exploding. Um, a lot of pharmaceutical companies have been pushing more and more and more and more drugs into the populace and Tennessee decided to get in there and fix this to the best of our ability. So we've created a, uh, since 96, or excuse me, since 2006 we've had a voluntary drug database where physicians and pharmacists could choose if they wanted to to see who was prescribing what drug to who and who was filling it. Um, so that they could not overprescribe. Um, it is now compulsory that a doctor's office must check the database before prescribing controlled substances. These are not every prescription. This is mainly your uh, street level type drugs are schedule two, three, and four that have a high tendency for abuse and they don't have, uh, they may have a very narrow medical focus to them. And we want to make sure that the drug is not being used outside the confines of that medical focus. That's an interesting issue, you know, because it's, it's cropped up more or less recently, you know. We've been concerned for years and years and years about illegal drugs. Yep. But now, all of a sudden, the legal drugs, the prescription drugs, have become a, a it, major problem. It has, and we, uh, we have a lot of Tennesseans that are dying, and um, well over a 1,000 a year from drug overdoses. We have another 80-plus thousand that are visiting emergency rooms every year. Most of these are inadvertent. Um, mixing different prescriptions with perhaps alcohol or with each other. Um, a doctor maybe not knowing the, the holistic treatments that you're receiving from other areas. Um, some people just are choosing to take the path of least resistance to heal themselves or to get over a, an issue and that is to take a pill. Um, this law will curtail that substantially. Um, over the next 18 months we will get it down to 48 hours. Um, worth of time lapse from the time that you actually fill a drug to the time that it shows up in the system um, that a doctor can tell and hopefully we want to do it even faster than that but right now a doctor would if I was going to prescribe if I was a physician I was going to prescribe you hydrocodone I would check the system if you'd been prescribed that um, and you, were, you still had a prescription that was valid and you should still have some pills I can't prescribe that again uh, I have to wait to a certain amount of time. Now I am still given discretion as a physician to do short course medications and be exempt from this. Um, ER doctors, um, some surgery centers for some things can still do what they do. It's just normally it's the, the long term chronic treatment of pain with prescription medications. We want to be able to put some bulwark in there against that. Also, this bill allows law enforcement uh, on a need-to-know basis to research I was going to say, uh, you know, when you've got that kind of an issue, the concern right. always is 
who gets to, who has access to this data? It's tight, and, and you have to have a reason to look <laughs> at it, and uh, and that reason has to be divulged in court. So the patient, uh, the doctor, the pharmacist, and law enforcement. Law enforcement and regulatory boards, medical regulatory boards, if they mm. have to do some type of disciplinary action against someone that's overprescribing. Yeah. Okay. Well, with that, folks, uh, we need to take a short commercial break, and we'll come back and go some more. Hi, Grandma. It's Jake. I'm, I'm calling to tell you, you I love you more than anything in the whole wide world, even ice cream. I love you more than spaghetti and meatballs. I love you more than snakes and monkeys and sharks mm -hmm. and whales and prey mantises. Uh, bye, Grandma. Love you. Let it all in with Charter Phone, including unlimited local and long-distance calls. We're back, folks, and we're talking today with uh, Representative Judd Matheny, and we're uh, trying to go over the uh, uh, the results of the uh, legislative session, which just ended, uh, I guess, a month or so ago. And uh, let's talk some more about uh, substantive issues. Uh, what, what's your... Well, we, we revamped uh, some civil service requirements in Tennessee, and we also revamped a lot of the boards and commissions that we have. The governor, two years ago when he first took office, he ordered a top-to-bottom review of all state departments and agencies. Um, basically, his instructions were to make sure that they're still performing the mission that they're supposed to perform. If you had, if you were given marching orders today and had to build a department to execute those marching orders, would the department look like it looks today or would you rebuild it? If you had to rebuild it, how would you do that? And as these reports began to come in, the governor began to take action by consolidating boards, um, eliminating some boards. Uh, making sure that it was not political appointments that made up those boards, um, even though there are political appointees, but we want to make sure that people are experts in that subject matter, that there are not redundancies between various boards and commissions, that uh, environmental boards are talking to each other, transportation boards are talking to each other, and that there is seamless integration between them as they speak. Um, for instance, we have a road project in Manchester we're working on, Three different times it's been approved. And three different times different state agencies have come in and said, nope, stop. Another eight month delay for us to look at this. Okay, you're clear, let's move forward. Nope, stop again. What we're trying to do is get everybody on the same sheet, raise all their objections at one time so everything can be rectified at one time. Oh, that means they all have to review it yes, sir. the first time around. And yeah. move a little bit quicker at the speed of business. The governor has put uh, uh, an individual in place that is actually warehousing all the information on various projects and making sure that these individual institutions are coordinating with each talking other on the project, other. whether it's transportation, talking to economic community development, that's talking to the environment. We just want to make sure that that's moving together well. Also, the top to bottom review that we have of our existing industries has been going very well. And Coffee County has been a great recipient of existing industries growing. Um, Viam Manufacturing has grown considerably. Batesville Casket has grown considerably. Uh, MTech is growing by leaps and bounds. Everybody associated with the automobile industry is exploding yeah. in our area. Our unemployment rate, I uh, also represent a good bit of Warren County, and that still is above the national average. Coffee County, though, has dipped below the national average, and we're continuing to improve. And, um, and statewide, we're a little, I don't remember the number. We're, 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 about, we're about two tenths of a percent below the national average mm, now, okay. and swinging down. Um, high of about 10 percent two years ago, we're down about 7.8 now. And the national rate's right at about 8. Right. And um, so that was a, what we're doing there is transforming what the expectations of government from businesses and from businesses to government and trying to streamline that. And I'm very proud of those things. The Tennessee Regulatory Authority, um, the jury's still out on whether or not we need to make the changes that we did with that. Um, it was something the governor was very ardent in, but we're one of the few states now 
that has gone to a part-time commission for the Tennessee Regulatory Authority that uh, regulates a lot of our public utilities and ha had a big uh, say-so in the telecommunications industry some years ago. And folks may remember this is the old Public Service Commission from the 90s um, that was turned into the Tennessee Regulatory Authority. We've seen some reports that uh, we could have some negative outlooks on some of our bond pro bonding projects with regards to utility infrastructure in Tennessee because we're going part-time and uh, we want to watch that very closely and make sure that it's not going to adversely affect us um, more than the savings that we're uh, giving to the taxpayer indirectly through rate savings that uh, utilities are paying to the TRA. Um, but, but that revamp is substantial. Um, we're one of the few states doing it and, uh, and it's the, I think the governor is hoping that we are following his lead on this and his business expertise and, and we're trying to do the best we can. Um, the uh, civil service uh, revamp that we did um, was a tough road. We uh, had a lot of negotiations with State Employees Association and I have to say they were absolutely stellar in their negotiations. Um, many times you see people take their toys and go home if they don't get what they want or they can't get an audience. They were very professional um, right up to the time that a compromise was finally struck. Um, what the governor intended to do and what I think the new legislation will have a, an overall impact on doing is just making sure that the best people in state government are promoted to the best positions. That just because you've been there longer than anybody else, you get a chance to go there, is not necessarily going to be what makes it or not. Yeah. More discretion is given to the senior level management to put the best person in place for the job. When we look at what's happened in Wisconsin, uh, you got you got that that program through, uh, and I guess he gets a big chunk of the credit for that. The governor, with a minimum amount of controversy, you know. Well, he, he was he was excellent at listening. Um, I can promise you, there were more than three dozen major meetings associated with this piece of legislation, and the ball moved many times. Um, back and forth towards each end zone. It was not a, a all or nothing mentality by either party. He must be a pretty good negotiator. He yeah. was and he has a good team negotiating yeah. with him. He's, he's got a, a good team of uh, legislative liaisons. Some of them are, are former representatives. Some of them are former uh, private sector folks. Some of them are total neophytes and, and, <laughs> and learning things the hard way like we all do in politics. But they're doing a great job. Okay. They really are. Uh, Let's talk about education a minute. Uh, of considerable interest was the uh, the bill that you passed limiting uh, immigrant teachers in the charter school system to three and a half percent. What's three percent? Yeah, three. Three percent of the total. Yes, sir. What what this does is what's that, behind that? Yeah. As as charter schools explode, now most of us are in favor of charter schools, and the basic concept of a charter school is to be able to take in private money and basically put a private board of directors together and have a private school that has a mission focus. Uh, it could be music, it could be arts, it could be sports, uh, it could be any number of things, mathematics. Um, also still providing well-rounded education. It has come to our attention that there are some foreign institutions that are abusing the H-1B and J-1 visa programs, which are your immigrant uh, employment visa programs in the country. They are not, no, those programs are reserved to bring in foreign labor, foreign talent when it cannot be found domestically. Um, we don't believe in Tennessee that there's no available math or science teachers, that there's no available music teachers, and in some cases janitors and assistant principals in charter schools. But we've seen foreign entities recruiting these individuals, um, bringing them over six months at a time, renewing their visas, keeping them for another six months, and then letting them go back to their, to their home country. We want the first option given to Tennessee teachers to be able to teach in Tennessee schools. And that's the bottom line. And um, the cap that we've put in place is, is basically a general rule. It's not hard and fast. It's a, what we call a permissive cap. It says that 3% of the school staff, to include janitorial staff, cafeteria staff, et cetera, cannot utilize these H-1B visa programs. And that when you apply for your charter school, you have to lay out how you're going to recruit your teachers, where they're going to come from, how you're going to fund them, where the funding's coming from, and what your curriculum's going to be. And that information, which is basically the same information that a public school posts on its sites or links to it, we want to make sure that every parent 
and every student has the right to make an informed decision about where they're going to go to school, who's going to be teaching, what the curriculum is, where the money's coming from. And it's just to, once again, make sure that the charter school system doesn't run away with the freedoms and liberties that we've granted ourselves over the years. And uh, we teach American values, and we, we stick with a curriculum that is geared towards the United States Constitution, and that is not secluded from those types of things, not only the, the eyes of other American citizens, but also the regulatory boards. And, uh, and that's, in a nutshell, that's the main reason for that bill. Um, it is permissive, so that if somebody needs to break that 3% cap, all they need to do is make a compelling case to the charting authority or to the state of Tennessee. Um, for instance, if Volkswagen wanted to put a German cultural school in place, they have every right to do that. They can, as long as they're showing that they're not abusing the visa programs, that they've done their due diligence to hire domestic teachers, um, at least uh, to the best of their ability, then we can still grant them um, special who, exceptions. Who has the authority to grant those exceptions? The Tennessee Board of Education, okay. State Board of Education. All right. So it's not hard and fast. It's not, once again, all or nothing. It's, this is the guiding principle. Let's shoot for this. If you need to deviate from it, just make a compelling case to us. Okay. Well, with that, folks, guess what? We've run out of time. We always do. And uh, we may have to have Judd back again uh, before the new session started, starts. Sure. So uh, meanwhile, well, let's take a short commercial break, and we'll have to wrap up. I'm NASCAR driver Mark Martin. You know what's worse than waiting in traffic? Waiting in the emergency room when you're in pain. So choose the ER that's extra fast, ER Extra. ER Extra is specifically engineered to get you the help you need and back in action with race car speed. ER Extra, extra fast, extra easy, extra great. ER Extra, exclusively at Harton Regional Medical Center. You'll never guess what happened today. What? You want to see? They found a giant squid in New Zealand, bigger than this whole bedroom. Bigger than mommy's minivan. Bigger than mommy's minivan. Pounds. Isn't that amazing? And its eyeball, big as a basketball. <laughs> Let it all in with Charter Internet and get the fastest, most reliable internet speeds. Great, folks, and uh, we've been talking today with uh, Representative Judd Matheny and uh, catching up on this year's legislative agenda. Judd, uh, you got a little message for the folks? Well, as always, I want to thank you for, for 10 years now. I've, I've uh, been coming on and, and doing your show here, and it's been a great honor and a privilege and, and getting to know you every time. And uh, I appreciate the individuals letting me, to, letting me serve. I hope your investment's paying off. Please continue to communicate with your elected representatives, whether you're in Franklin County, the Tullahoma City portion of Franklin County. David Alexander is a wonderful guy. Uh, contact him down there. Uh, me for anywhere in Coffee County. Um, senator Stewart is still our senator until November. Um, get out there and pay attention to what's happening in your state senate primary race. Um, it is important who represents you. Uh, don't forget about your website, Tennessee.gov. Everything that we discussed today uh, can be backed up factually, uh, links to what we discussed, as well as the live hearings about the subjects we discussed. And with that, folks, uh, <laughs> Judd, thank you <laughs> for coming on, and uh, thank you, folks, for inviting us into your parlor, and we'll thank see you, you next time. Thank you.